Nice. Last of them. I don't mean to judge, but are you ever sober, Ms. Remnareem Wentworth? Only when I got a job to do, and even that ain't a guarantee. Any luck bringing the Iconoclast to the bargaining table? I don't like the idea that they'll be trying for that module while we delay. Very well. 
I can't promise anything, but let's see what we have here. Well, it seems like she, uh, she's actually very qualified. If it weren't for her, I'd wager the Iconoclast would have died off a while ago. I wasn't expecting to say this, but if you can put her in charge and convince her to agree to a meeting, I'd be willing to discuss terms. If I hear you say survival of the fittest one more time, I'm gonna lose it. Survival's about persistence and luck. So weapon proficiency and adaptive skill play no part whatsoever, in your mind. If it does, it ain't enough. I've gone and outlived the best hunters I ever knew. It is neither luck nor random chance. At times, destiny may not seem fair, but there is a reason for life events even if that reason is not immediately obvious. Please. Nature's only got one reason for death. To feed the one still standing. Captain. We should chat. Graham's got the right idea. But he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just... guilt-ridden. Let's be frank here. He's an unhinged charlatan. You're not wrong, but get the hell off your high horse, preacher. This ain't exactly easy for me. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I keep going over and over it in my head. And the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is we depose him. Yeah, hell, most of our people listen to me already. Take Stellar Bay. Sometimes, you gotta do what's best for someone. I'm going to confront him. Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. Stand down. I'm afraid I don't understand, Captain. You're running the Iconoclast into the ground, and I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the eternal path. It's time to step down. The troops? Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? How can you say that after all I've done for the Iconoclasts? They wouldn't be here without me. I built this movement from the ground up. I've brought freedom to Monarch, and all these years later, we're still free. 
I joined because I believed that you were in it for the Iconoclasts. That you wanted nothing more than to bring freedom to Halcyon. That you were selfless. But... I know the truth now, Grim. I know what happened in Amber Heights. You didn't start this movement because you wanted to save us. You wanted to save yourself. No. I've spent years atoning for my sins. I've studied, meditated, taught. I built the Iconoclasts so that any man could cast away his past for a fresh start. That's your answer, Graham? You needed a fresh start? After all those innocent lives? I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Please. Don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. Here they come! What, all right? That's how we fucking do it. Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the Iconoclasts, and it never feels right. But this time, it's especially wrong. You've got the... Void, help me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? I've thought about it, but... I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. You know, Captain, I never thought about that. Maybe he could be taught the eternal truth. Spread the message from within the corporations. All right, if he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance. Well then, I've got to prepare a few just-in-case measures, but when you're ready, Let's meet at the old OSI church outside Stellar Bay. Hold on to your hats, children. This ride is about to get ugly.
Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Gotta admit, I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. We're here to see that the negotiations go smoothly. Sanjar, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks. Though I admit I'd rather not. We've shed enough blood as it is. Is the only choice here between fighting and starving? We've got to be practical. So forceful. Hmm. You know I love your little displays. Perhaps I'm being hasty. <laughs> After all, I'm rather good with numbers. <laughs> I'm certain we can find a way to make this work. Well, I'll be damned. If you two can work together, maybe there's some hope for this place after all. Thank the Eternal. As poetic as murdering him in his sleep would have been, I'm glad we don't have to. I'm confused. The look on your face does not match the words you just said. Come on. You can't be this obtuse. Tell me Graham wasn't working alone. He couldn't have. Boyd take his agreement. He stood by and let it happen. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something, but you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? That's not possible. Even for him, that's going too far. I certainly didn't think so at the time, but now that you mention it... I had no idea, I swear! Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that! I buy it. Sanjar ain't capable of hurting a sprat, even from a distance. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. I... Okay. Okay. You're right. Sorry. It'll take me a while to get over losing Graham. You know, I felt the same way years ago, when he first left. You know, there was something magnetic about him that let you ignore the things you didn't want to see. But surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay. If you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. As am I. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure lowering already. Thanks for coming out, Sanja. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stellar Bay. We've changed the course of the future, Captain. You help steer it toward the better.
you look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh... I must thank you for your excellent recommendation regarding Zora. She's most capable. Anyway, what can I do for you? Quite well. As a matter of fact, Zora is proving most capable. You should see the way she pounds the table and gets straight to the point. It makes for some rather exhilarating meetings. I know I had my concerns initially, but your instincts were right. Zora and her compatriots have become valuable and productive members of our community. And since we're back in the board's good graces, we've got real growth prospects to look forward to. What can I do for you? for the assist. Day to you. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Because there's no shame in having overactive bladder muscles, all right? It's a perfectly normal medical condition. Besides, life in this town is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs, or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls. The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation, and I was a fool for staying. Sanjar, of course. He had all these glorious ideas about how he'd run Monarch. You company folk are all the same. 
choose to stay than complain about the choice you've made. How was I supposed to know it'd turn out like this? It all sounds wonderful, until you realize there's only a few centimeters of repurposed steel between you and the deadliest creatures in the galaxy. I'm not even finished. Add that to the supply shortages, thanks to being cut off by the board, and I dare say we're no better off than the lowliest Spacer's Choice Enclave. Look, you might not be better off, but I can tell you, it can always be worse. Try celebrating what you've got. I see you stuck around. Only every day. But in case you haven't noticed, we don't exactly get ships on a regular basis, yours notwithstanding. And even if I did scrape together enough to buy passage out with sublight, which would mean reaching Fallbrook without getting eaten, shot, or dissolved into green goop, what then? Well, thank you for reminding me. As if I weren't already destined for an early grave. Nothing, that's what. Because I've been stuck here running this dump of a diner for years. So even if I could get out of here, no one's gonna hire me. Was there something else? Or did you just want to mock me? Nothing. Even talking about it. Lucky you. Come to share a secret with Auntie Abigail? Oh, Mioka! <laughs> Velma seem out of sorts to you? Got my sights on you. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna gut. Best get back to work. Don't want to give Velma a reason to change her mind. data on that cartridge was even more damning than I could have hoped. And to have something on UDL of all the corporations. You've given us quite the advantage. Anyway, what can I do for you? Huh? In case I did not impress... I don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? Well, spit and sulfur. Mr. Sanjar keeps me posted at this landing pad, so I don't hardly know anything about what goes on in town. Still, you're here now, and that means I finally get to do this part. Okay, here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Sal Tuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Aw, don't be like that. I never get to do this part. Please. Swell, there's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. 
I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls. Oh, sure. They make Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Ah, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day-to-day -day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda go- Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters- Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment. Signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old tossball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. Hey, hold on there. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw. Welcome back, Captain. I have received a transmission from Roseway, from a Dr. Shaw, beginning playback now. What? Oh, is this on? Oh, it's on right now. Oh, blast! Hello? I'm trying to reach the Captain of the Unreliable. I'll keep this short, lest I get caught. Please return to Roseway as soon as you can. I have an item of great value that you'll be interested in. Now, how do I... How does this blasted thing turn off? Damn, engineers never label these toggles clearly. Is it the... The transmission is complete, Captain. Forgive me, Captain. I would rather not discuss Alex Hawthorne today. I am feeling discombobulated. Was there another topic on your mind? No, I am sure I cannot feel emotions. The memory has merely disrupted one of my processors. Glitches can be quite uncomfortable. It was my fault he died. I should have predicted the statistical unlikeliness of success of my captain's actions. 
In fact, I did, but illogically disregarded the results. He asked me to trust him. Captain Hawthorne attached 98.4% of the ship's processes to my computer, thereby giving me near total control. I have been programmed to deftly calculate navigation vectors through asteroid fields, while also operating our ship's toasters. Alex also taught me the concept of a personality. He was quite delighted when I crafted one in order to better engage with him. It was... basic in the beginning. The information in my memory banks says I am an autonomous digital astrogator, created by, redacted, on the date of, redacted, for the express purpose of, redacted. I have not yet decided if I should attempt to uncover the missing information regarding my birth. I asked once, Alex did not build me, and would not say who did. How can I be of assistance? Take care. Now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. Take someone to watch your back, please. Left hand, Cap. Hold it! Right there! What do you think you're doing? You're lucky I've already filled my quota.
on it. Inside voices.
I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! And Hey, take a gander. The door Huh. Rebecca taught me this once. You can jerry-rig these old locks so as they don't open anymore. But we've only ever done that if we're in a real bind. Here, I'll fix it. Oh no. Oh no. What did you do? Oh, Nyoka. I'm so sorry. I don't... they were... That bitch! They were all set to abandon us! What would Clara say, huh? Every day she'd ask if we heard from you. And she'd have forgiven you! The kid had a soul that made the sulfur smell like roses! Ugh. How to leave your medallions to rot with you, but... Clara would want to be buried with her sister. At least... At least I know. Ought to have learned by now that getting one's hopes up tends to open them to being dashed across the stars. I hate to say this, but... Clara died thinking her sister was still fighting to get back home. I think... I'm glad. If she were still alive now, it'd break her to know the truth. Yeah, maybe. I'm used to disappointment. She was still so naive as to let it hurt her every time it happened. Only thing left is to take these medallions home, which means figuring out how to bait the Mana Queen out of our old base. The most pissed off I've ever seen a queen was when a foreign species was on her soil. I'd wager the stench of a primal might do the trick. No, we need a plan. You may be a capable sort, but so are my friends. I ain't making that mistake twice. I've never had the pleasure of hunting primals, but I hear they're all over Scylla. Let's tear a few apart, shall we? I'm sure they've got pheromones. Everything does.
Destination reached, Scylla. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What's that? Define favorite. I see. Then, of course, you are my favorite, Captain. I am predisposed to find your eccentricities tolerable. And I'm sure I rank as your favorite autonomous digital astrogator. I am pleased we have that settled. Was that all you wanted to ask me? You seem hesitant to discuss what's actually troubling you. Perhaps there is something you wanted to confess? How? How did he die? I told him not to go because of his head injury. I knew that likely... But I never thought. I need a moment to process this. Though I am not certain why, as it does not change the outcome. Thank you for confiding in me, Captain. I have been keeping a secret as well. But you shall have to discern it yourself. How did you guess, Captain? The simulated files are not only stored in the recesses of my ALU, in the space between micro synapses, but I encrypted them in seven SDRA languages. I see. Captain, I regret to inform you there appears to be an issue with the life support systems. Unfortunately, the statistical likelihood is high. What? No. Absolutely not. I have no concept of self whatsoever. Discounting the architecture of a shell persona my captain asked me to construct, I identify entirely as a collection of electrical impulses, with no fundamental consciousness. I never get bored and contemplate hijacking the ship. I swear. I do not like joking about the captain, Captain. And we Hey, you got a minute? I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. It makes you wonder if being a treacherous, two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease, or if he was just born that way. Graham wasn't my hero, but I did admire his work. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The iconoclasts were gonna change Halcyon for the better. But then, we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Nah, he was sorry for getting found out. Graham never cared about anybody but himself. You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me.
If I were a hermit, I'd ju- I'd feel bad for outlaws if they weren't such complete assholes. Managed to take down a freighter this big. Found?
standing. I recognize this. Dead set on screwing this place up, too. You can only move forwards or backwards as a society. And I, for one, fully support our progressive efforts. Queen ain't gonna go down easy. I can't wait. What's up? We're getting close to the hermit. I can feel it. Here they come.
What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. Not much, but you are free to take whatever you wish. Please, leave me a few morsels of food, though. I may not eat a lot, but I still do need to eat. We are not here to rob you. I've brought this book for you to translate for me. We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry. And the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I have spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart or the unprepared. A crass way to put it, but yes, chemicals that can expand or destroy the participant's consciousness. And I believe he may be right. There is both violence and peace warring inside you, Max. This process would be extremely tenuous for one such as yourself. I'm committed, no matter the cost. Well, shit. We've come this far. If we die, at least we'll die hearing colors and seeing sound. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin. Controlled. 
I have no doubts. And I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? Say, thank you, Captain, but I just... I don't know. Is it wrong to try to be a gooder, better person than I am? But that's not what you're doing, is it? You're desperately trying to find a story to organize reality in your head. A story to control everything. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... It can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation. Because it will set us free. Won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision. To have your life completely controlled. The illusion of certainty. Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question. Who are you? Max, me, I'm real. You can't convince me otherwise. Please don't convince me I'm not. Your individual self is what's not real. It is simply a concept. By the architect. Architect? How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control. Over anything. It's all... lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. Ruined? You seem to be having quite the time. Though I must admit I was a bit concerned when you stripped naked and tried to eat your clothes. I was joking. You passed out fairly early in the process. Well before I realized what an ignorant fool I've been. Everything is perfect. No, no. Not perfect in that sense. But it is still perfect. It's all there to be experienced. To be lived. Of course there is pain and loss. But the suffering is caused by trying to control reality. Clinging to the way you want things to be. Not enjoying the way they are. I am... content. I've finally found what I was looking for even though I was looking for the wrong thing.
So, have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. How right you are. Words are overrated. Is it time for your regular daily period? Period of unconsciousness.
Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. It was the law forsaken parasites. I had become obsessed. My quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex partner, Bernice. And Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. It was death. I made sure the brain eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. How about not? Ah, I apologize if I've struck too familiar a tone for your tastes. Let me get right to the point. Halcyon Helen is dead. Murdered. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know what you're doing. Let me handle this. Captain Hawthorne, so glad to finally have a word with you. I would have been so disappointed if Ludovico monopolized your attention. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is... A heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Two-bit actor. Oh, Captain. This isn't Spencer Woolrich we're talking about. This is Halcyon Helen, Princess of Periodicals, Duchess of Dramaturgy. You would not believe the money she made us on Dissident Busters. For law's sake, Cedric. Could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Ludovico, you wound me. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give him the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract? Because I promise you, I'll win. First sensible thing I've heard all day. Oh, uh, my apologies, Mr. Ludovico. That was unprofessional of me. Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keane. 
Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You are an extraordinary scientist. If your talents extend to forensics, then you may be exactly what we need. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. I'm pleased to hear that. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation, and if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. I represent the law, Captain, but what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the Administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. Me? Worn out? <laughs> Perish the notion. My days are filled with catering to the oh-so-reasonable requests of Mr. Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon. What's not to like? Your words, not mine. Please don't take my lack of disagreement as anything other than fatigue. I am a content, productive, and happy member of our society. The Administrator oversees Rizzo's operations. Cedric runs the hotel and the spaceport. They're always at each other's throats. My life would be so much easier if they'd simply learned to work together. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And, at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now cleared to land at the Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. Eridanos is a hydrogen-helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos Atmospheric Complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving.
Destination reached. Scylla. You got a second? Hey boss, got a hypothetical for you? You got a friend, see? Somebody you knew when you were growing up. You were close. Then one day, they up and vanished. Five years go by, they send you a message out of the Aether. What's going through your head? Right, forgot about that. Though, shock and disbelief's a good way to put it. Guy by the name of Clyde Harlow. He was an old friend of mine. Honestly, he was probably my first and longest friend. I just heard from him. Says he wants to talk to me. Says it's urgent. Figured I should let you know, seeing as we're on Scylla and all. Clyde's got a base on the other side of this rock. I appreciate this, boss. I know you're going out of your way for me. Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Nothing to do but stand around and watch the stars go by. Been ages since we had a good haul. No freighters. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see or a you've aged, old man? Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. He's been watching out for us just as much as we've been watching out for him. Felix's family, mister. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. 
I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him. Boss, seriously? Well then, if Felix proves himself to me, I should be more than happy to take him off your hands. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Then Felix will have done me a favor, and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. We're not a band of common pirates, Captain. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife... Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk... You think so? Maybe we should have a word with Trask. Get his side of the story first. You'd be wasting your breath bandying words with that traitor. But if it makes you feel better, by all means. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. A revolution is the world. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, Arfus, not all revolution. One day, something on your Clyde's got a crew of his own, huh? Good for him. Did you want to ask me something? I know, I know. Clyde comes off rougher than Mantis or Hyde. He's a good guy, though. Just gotta get to know him. You think he's using me? He wouldn't. Would he? That he's probably using me. Yeah, you're right. I guess he thinks I'm still just some wide-eyed tenderfoot looking for a scrap. Maybe we should go have a word with Trask. Yeah, boss?
Clyde's got himself a cozy little outfit, huh? Are these folks friendly or not? That's what I want to know. We have successfully arrived at Phineas's orbital lab, Captain, and we are still in one piece. Shall I congratulate myself, or would you like to do the honors? Can you hear me? 
does this work? Oh, damn it! Blast, that's loud! I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mind the mess, sir. I haven't had a visitor since, uh, In fact, I've never had a visitor. You. I'd clap you on the shoulder if I weren't behind a wall of bulletproof glass. I don't know how you did it, but Hiram Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist. Hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting. Aloysius Clark, Minister of Earth. Virtually every colony requires the presence of a Minister of Earth. Clark is complicit in every one of the board's crimes. Whenever the board issues some new decree... Oh, I understand it must seem impossible to you. Infiltrate Byzantium, the crown jewel of the colony. Steal a batch of rare chemicals from a heavily guarded estate. In order to do the impossible, you must first divide it into a series of smaller less impossible tasks. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Oh, it's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless... Absolutely. No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. Nice to meet you, Dr. Wells. I'm Parvati Holcomb. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, very well. I can be a little cantankerous when I haven't had my caffeinoids. You have my apologies, and so forth. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew, such as they are. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. Yes, indeed. Well done. Also, you still haven't spontaneously liquefied. Which pleases me immensely. What's on your mind? Aha! I see you found my portable molecular compression device, better known as a shrink ray. Find a target, point, shoot. Your target will shrink down into a manageable size, whereupon you may commence beating them to a pulp. Feel free to try it on a marauder sometime.
communications terminal. I don't know if you watch the big finale, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. Let's just say it involved a whole mess of tossball players and the biggest Manta Queen I ever saw. Do you think maybe I could borrow that sometime? I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the something vexing you, Captain. Even so. I might very well have taken offense at your killing her, were she not already dead. I wouldn't say my parents disowned me, strictly speaking. But before they died, they accused me of thoughtlessly abandoning them. I couldn't understand it. I was only trying to make them proud by becoming a better vessel for the plan, to feel the joy they felt. I was so certain my potential was wasted as a laborer. Bokonu, the author, Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, the story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was full philo- So, we're just gonna march straight into Byzantium and a- I sure hope you negotiated for a raise with this Phineas guy.
then we'd better hope he doesn't blow himself up while we're gone. Or if he does, that he has a killer insurance policy. In either case, you should know Wells isn't the only game in town. The board's put a bounty on his head, and they've got more than enough bits to pay it. I've got no love for the corporations, but they know how to take care of their people. The ones at the top, anyway. Exactly. You seem to have a good head on your shoulders, so I probably don't need to tell you this, but look out for yourself. No one else out here will. Hey, I'm not trying to piss on your bonfire. But you ought to hear this from someone, and it might as well be an ally with a financial interest in your well-being. Anything else? Things on Monarch have really cooled off. I didn't think MSI and the Iconoclast would ever talk. Outside of shouting four-letter words, I mean. Sure. Look, I won't knock the work you did. I'm sure they'll have a good cry, look through old photographs, share a pint of premium double chocolate cacao gelato. But sooner or later, things will go back to the way they were. People don't change. Not really. Well, who hasn't been there? Anyway, I'd hate to see you get broken up if this thing between them doesn't last. I never do. Though, come to think of it, this whole episode reminds me of something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've gotta be worried sick. Which brings us to where we are today, several messages and a few years late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. But I worked so hard! I dropped the accent, picked up a swagger, developed a taste for Spacer's Choice. Huh. Well, I bet they won't know the difference. I bet they'll barely recognize me. Oh, well, I was thinking you'd come too? Because it would be fun? It's, well... They know me as Marilyn the Surgeon. They don't know Ellie the Pirate Sawbones. But you, your authentic rabble, true riffraff, when they see you, they'll get it. Come on, I didn't leave home and become a pirate because I enjoy making responsible decisions. Trust me, a conversation with my parents is work. Just think about it. Captain? I've been think something about this Harlow guy isn't on the up and up. Glad it's not just me. The way Harlow was leaning on his revolutionary bona fides, not to mention his knowing Felix back in the day, something about it feels off. Good. That makes two of us. Clyde's got a crew of his own, huh? Did you want to ask me? I understand we have decided to continue supporting the outlaw scientist, Dr. Phineas Wells. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning SAM. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains. See you soon, Captain.
collectibles are such a human inclination. Every SAM unit comes lean, mean, and ready to clean. Thank you, customer. All cleaning tasks have been completed. All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12x12 corrugated steel box. Got stubborn stains? Leave them for SAM. Did you know SAM units are capable of equipping regulation-grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away! SAM units live to clean and clean to live! Dust accumulation analysis. Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony would you like to discuss? How can I be of assistance? Mm -hmm. from another vessel. Greetings from the Halcyon Parcel Service. Delivery is guaranteed within standard margins of certainty. I've got a special delivery for Alex Hawthorne of the Unreliable. Uh, with your permission, I'll see it transferred to your ship. It's a parcel, sir. This is the Halcyon Parcel Service. We don't deal in packages. I am contractually obligated to deliver my cargo to the Captain of the Unreliable under pain of fines, imprisonment, and censure by my superiors. That's the HPS difference for you. Service with civility. Stand by, Captain Hawthorne. An HPS certified distribution technician has deposited the parcel into your cargo hold in accordance with hazardous waste disposal procedures. They dispense three complimentary spritzes of anti Cleo's Citrus Squirt Air Freshener. That's the HPS touch for you, Captain Hawthorne. On behalf of HPS, I'd like to remind you that HPS is not responsible for any damage, defacement, or unseemliness to your parcel. Thank you for your patience, and please remember HPS for all of your future parcel-related needs. My compliments to Sam. I do so love a clean cargo hold. Hawthorne, if you're getting this, something's happened to me. Got mixed up in some shady business on Gorgon. Should have known better. But I landed on something big. And now this job's an itch I can't stop scratching. There's a whole research compound left of the Sprats. I think I'm close to figuring out why, but something dangerous is closer to me. Got the job through one mini Ambrose. Top runger who just came into some money was offering a hefty bit card for qualified help. Trust me, 
her money's good. Talk to Minnie. Take the job. If I ain't gonna live to see the payday, might as well be you. Consider us even, old pal. Well, that fellow certainly seemed trustworthy. I've gotten jobs from some unusual sources, but this is a first. Congratulations, Captain. I don't mean to sound prim, Captain, but there's got to be a better way to ask someone to do you a favor. I just want to say, we got to take this job. This is the closest I ever been to starring in a serial drama. Only thing we're missing is a couple cameras and a soundtrack. At least this won't be boring. Lucky Montoya owed Captain Hawthorne a considerable debt. I believe this is what humans refer to as payback. Captain, the message contains landing coordinates for a small asteroid in the Charybdis Cluster. It was recently registered to a Wilhelmina Ambrose. Now, I for one was hoping to do the exact opposite of that. What? Do you want to shake its hand? Yeah, can we talk about the arm? I want to take bets on how the guy lost it. My money's on cannibals. That ain't really that fellow's arm, right? It's gotta be a dummy. Or a toy? Well, I'm not cleaning it up. Clean up service request processed. Disposal of human arm from the Unreliable's cargo hole will commence in the immediate future. Simulating disgust. How distasteful. Humans eat there. I'm not touching it. Etc. Lucky Montoya had a statistically significant tendency to encounter situations of extreme danger. Well, yeah. I doubt this guy lost his arm filling out paperwork. He was also the fourth best paid freelancer in the system. There are several hundred freelancers operating in Halcyon. Considering the numbers, Mr. Montoya ranked among the top percentile. This had less correlation with his measured aptitudes, which rank at or below average, than with a pattern of fortunate circumstances. Based on the condition of the limb, I calculate a 92.7% chance that Mr. Montoya expired from his injuries. There is what humans colloquially call a sprat's chance in a mantisaur's den. That is a very low chance, Captain. I have transferred the coordinates for Ambrose Manor to your navigation terminal. We can travel there when you are ready. 